Hello again, my name is Greg Eisen. I'm with Eisen's Nursery and Vineyard. In this educational video, we're going to show you how to install a drip irrigation system. To me, drip irrigation is one of the greatest inventions that allows us to water plants using the least amount of water and getting the most benefit from it. Uh, the system is low cost, it's low flow, and the beautiful thing about it is the water is not wasted. We're going putting water right at the root zone so every single bit of water that comes out of that tubing goes straight to the root zone. We're not wasting water. We're not watering weeds. We're not watering foliage. We're not promoting disease. Uh, it's easy to install. And the reason I'm such an advocate for drip irrigation is in farming or gardening, one of the few things that we can control is that if it's hot and dry, we at least have the ability to water. You know, if it's raining all the time, there's nothing we can do about that. But if it's warm and dry, we can help these plants stay in a healthy state by making sure they have adequate soil moisture. And the easiest way to do that is using a drip irrigation system. It's not complicated at all. There's no gluing. Uh, it's all twist power lock fittings. It's easy to do. And the system will last in excess of 20 years, 25 years. So what we have here, we have a couple of vines here. Uh, we've run a separate trellis wire to attach the drip irrigation to. The reason we put it on a separate wire is because a lot of home gardeners don't like to use herbicides. They prefer to weed eat. So if the drip irrigation system is elevated, it's out of the way of your lawnmower and out of the way of a weed eater. Now, if you choose to use herbicides, then you may place the tubing directly on the ground and that will work beautifully as well. Now, for the home gardener, the easiest way to do is to hook it to a garden hose. This fitting here is a water spigot adapter. Uh, this bib here will go right on the end of a water spigot. And on the other side is a power lock fitting that will clamp down the tubing. So what we'll do is we'll slide the tubing onto this barb here, and then we'll twist it and it'll lock down. So we're gonna run some irrigation tubing down this line. We're going to place an emitter in, and we're going to put a end cap on it to stop the flow of water once we get past the plant and this will be a great video for y'all to understand the ease and the benefits of the system. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I have some tubing here, and we're gonna take the tubing, and we're gonna slide it onto the water spigot adapter. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this piece of tubing and slide it over this barb. So we're gonna come right in here. I'm going to twist it on. Once I get it twisted on, this is a power lock fitting, so I'm gonna slide the power lock down and it's going to put compression on the tubing so it doesn't come off. So this is the first step. The second step is we're going to attach the tubing to this wire. Now we use what are called drip locks. These are little vine curls. And what they do is they will just wrap around the tubing and the wire to keep the tubing attached to the wire. So we'll come in here and we'll take the vine curl or the drip lock and we will simply wrap it around the tubing and the wire at the same time. Now we normally have to place these about three feet apart because we want that tubing nice and tight on the wire. Now when we get to the end of our row, this piece here is called a flushable end cap. What it does, it'll cap the flow of water. And what's nice about this is it allows us to take the cap off and then at the end of the growing season, if we want to drain the lines, it gives us the ability to flush out the lines. This fitting is the same as the water spigot adapter. You know, it will we'll take the tubing, slide over this barb, and then it power locks down and compresses it and keeps it in place. So we're at the end of the row. We're going to take this fitting, just like we did the other. We're going to slide it on the tubing. Once we get it nice and snug, we're going to take the power lock and twist it down. That will stop the flow of water at the end of the line. So we have the tubing in place. We have the tubing attached to the wire. Now it's time for us to install our emitters. If we're only using one emitter, we're gonna place the emitter on the high side of the plant. Now what the high side is, if the ground was level, it's not gonna matter which side, but if you have any slope to your ground, make sure you put the emitter on the high side of the plant so the water will feed down to the root zone. People ask me all the time, should I use one emitter or do you recommend two emitters or, or what do you recommend? 
And my answer is one is better than none, and two is obviously better than one. If you use two emitters, it'll allow equal water distribution on either side of the plant. If you only use one emitter, you know, the plant's getting some water, so we're keeping it happy. And that's where we would decide on which side of the plant that we need to place the emitter. This is the hole punch here. So all we do is simply take this punch and we'll place a hole into the tubing. So we'll come in here. We want to stay within about 12, 15 inches of the plant. So I'm going to come out here, my hand is, take the hole punch, and I, I made a hole into the tubing. The best emitter that we offer is the Bowsmith emitter. <clears throat> this is the Bowsmith. This is guaranteed not to clog up. So if you're going to go to the process of installing a drip system, I would recommend using the Bowsmith emitters. It gives you peace of mind because you know that your emitter will always work and it's not going to clog up. Now the Bowsmith has two barbs. It has a small barb on one end and a larger barb on the other. We recommend pushing the small barb into the tubing. So we're going to take the emitter, we're going to find where we punch the hole, and we're going to place the emitter right into the tubing. So right there, it's locked in, and it's going to drip water down low. Now we recommend using two emitters per plant here at the nursery. So I'm going to take another emitter, and I'm going to place it on this side of the plant right here. Okay. Now we sell three different gallons per hour on the emitters. These are half gallon per hour. We also sell a one gallon per hour and a two gallon per hour. I personally like using the half gallon per hour the best. So on this plant here, I've got two half gallon per hour emitters. So for every hour that the line runs, this plant's gonna get one gallon per hour. The reason I like the half gallon is, say if you forget to turn the water system off or you, you forget and it runs all night, you're less likely to overwater by using the half gallon per hour emitters. So we've got it installed. The emitters are 12, 15 inches on either side of the trunk. And when we turn the water on, it's gonna give a low flow drip system straight to the root zone of the plant. So let's turn this water on and see what we got. As you can see, we've got the drip irrigation installed. We've got the low flow system, dripping water straight to the root zone of the plants. We're not wasting any water. Uh, it's very efficient and it allows this plant to be as healthy as it possibly can be. Uh, the beautiful thing about this system is, you know, we just ran a, a single row, but the, we have fittings for tees and elbows and couplers. So it would be easy to customize your drip irrigation system to the layout that you have, just buying the tees and elbows to get to additional rows and whatever you need to do. Uh, now typically on young plants, first year in the ground, watering is kind of like walking up a flight of stairs. In April and May, we recommend six to eight gallons of water a week. June and July, eight to 12. And August, which is usually the hottest month, we'd recommend running a system about 12 to 16 gallons. And then as we get into the cooler months, September and October, we'll give less and less water. Now that's on young vines. Now a vine that's in its full production years from year four and up, you know, when the vine has a lot of fruit on it and we're hot and dry conditions, we may need to water that plant as much as 18 to 24 gallons of water a week to keep the vine in a healthy state. And the beautiful thing about the system is you can turn the system on at, at night, eight o'clock in the evening, let it run until eight in the morning. You ran the system for 12 hours and you gave the vine 12 gallons of water. Or if you're just using one half gallon per hour emitter, you'd be giving the vine six gallons over the course of the night. We really, really strive in our vineyards to keep the vine as healthy as we possibly can. And the way we do that is good cultural practices. Fertilizing the plant when and as needed and making sure the plant has adequate soil moisture. In our opinion, to be most successful growing muscadines with any fruiting plants, we really need to have the irrigation system there just to control adverse conditions. And one of the uh, 
neat things about the irrigation system is, is really the first really green movement that occurred in agriculture. Before, you know, you have all the pivots or, you know, we were really wasteful, one of our most precious resources, that's water. So if we can get the most benefit out of our water and use the minimal amount, then it's, it's very green. We hope you enjoy this demonstration on how to install a drip irrigation system. We sell all these components and we can customize your layout and ship it to you. And if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call. Thank you.